Okay, hello everybody, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2, where I just wanted to check something really quick. Fane would like to speak with you. Please. Right, righto, righto, we should do that. Um, uh, yeah, here. Wait, wait. Um, prototype. I do want to look at it. I, uh, I don't know. I probably just redid everything. Brief but massive boost to your armor. Creates a shield. Reeve. See, I was kind of trying to see if I could find... Um... Ooh, that would be cool. Anything that was. Oh. Shoot. Um. Blah. Engineering ish, but it's all biotic stuff. Mm. I mean, barrier's been useful, but. A Geth shield boost uh, to deflect attack damage or fortification. Reeve. Oh. Oh boy, Reeve is pretty good. Jeez. Drains kinetic barrier to boost your own shield. Well, okay, so it drains barriers to boost your shield. It doesn't drain shields. I mean, flashbang grenade would be... I, there's times where I've wanted a grenade, but it's just never really seemed to work out. Like when I was testing it in the beginning. Well, what the heck? Let's play with it. We'll play with it. We'll see. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. So we can play with the flashbang grenade. Delicate electronics and enemy nervous systems causing weapon difficulties in using biotic powers. Adds metal fragments causing extra damage when it explodes. Proves the potency of the incapacity heart farther away and keeping them down longer. Hmm. Okay, let's play with that. We kind of wanted to do pull as well, but we'll, we'll play with this and see what happens. Um, and I was actually going to do some mining, probably, because I do, let's see, what did I do? That was just that, right? And then, it would be nice to get the heavy pistol damage, shotgun extra rounds, but I don't know. I need to figure out where that is. Stuff is too far away. My phone is too far away. So we need platinum and palladium, platinum and palladium mostly. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a mining trip. Thane would like I know, to speak I with know, you. and I would love to speak with Thane too, but. All right, we will be back when something interesting happens. Okay, so I finished mining this system. We'll see. I know I can for sure get one. I can get the pistol upgrade. Yeah. Let's see. Sheesh. Hmm. Oh, wait. 
The ship enhancements, just the medical bay, pretty sure. Uh, and the prototypes are good. Okay, well, let's go talk to Thane then. And Samara. Yeah, Samara too. Yes, yes, yes. Good, good. Getting those quests. I just feel like, you know, you get one thing done and then there's like 30,000 other things to do. It's like, oh my gosh, I never feel like it's done. I still feel like I'm experimenting with crew configuration and everything. I'll be able to pay more attention to this game now, though. Now that Dragon Age 2 is done. This is like habit to come to this area first. Hello? Shepard. Um... Is there something wrong? Yes. Now that you are here, though, uh, it seems more difficult to talk about. I've got time. Take it at your own pace. Thank you. I hmm. fear I've already done that for too long. I had a family once. I still have a son. His name is Kolyat. I haven't seen him for a very long time. Did something happen to them? I abandoned them. Oh, not all at once. Nothing dramatic. No sneaking out in the middle of the night. No final argument or slammed door. I just did my job. I hunted and killed across the galaxy. Away on business, my wife would tell yeah. people. I was always away on business. How long has it been since you talked? Ten years. He showed me some of his <laughs> schoolwork and asked if we could dance crazy. We did that when he was younger. What sort of dance is that? It's... I checked my extranet contacts. I expect an update on my next target. The console plays music. Oh, unfashionable. Kolyat jumps into the room. My father runs around in circles. I scoop him up, toss him into the air. He shrieks, laughs, spin me. The console beeps. I put him down. Click the message. Father, he pleads. He tucks my sleeve. I need to read this, I say. I don't look at him. That has to be one of the more difficult ones to relive, you know? You never mentioned this before. Why now? When my wife departed from her body, I attended to that issue. I left Kolyat in the care of his aunts and uncles. I have not seen him or talked to him since. If we're talking about this, he must have contacted you. No, he didn't. Okay, sorry if that got a little bit glitchy. Um, I just noticed it and restarted the recording a second one so hopefully it's working now but yes we are gonna get a little bit more of the drill um psychology i guess you'll have to explain that one to me disconnected the body is not our true self the soul is body and soul work as one in a whole person when the soul is weakened by despair or fear when the body is ill or injured the individual is disconnected no longer whole. What's wrong with him? Is he hurt? Something happened that should not have. He knows where I've been, what I've done. Mm -hmm. I don't know his reasons, but he has gone to the Citadel. He's taken a job as a hitman. I don't know why like he would do that. To stop him. He is. This is not a path he should walk. I guess he's probably just trying to get his dad's attention in a way, but he's also maybe doing it to get revenge, I guess? I don't know, but I guess... Probably deep down he's doing it to try to understand his father, you know? You don't hire a raw rookie for a contract killing. I'm afraid someone may have seen we share a name and assumed we share skills. I don't know why he would accept the task. To be closer to you, maybe? That thought haunts me more than any other. Maybe he name-dropped you to get hired. It's possible, but I don't think so. It doesn't seem right. My name. He should not respect it. Hmm. What made him go to the Citadel? Years ago, I prepared a package for him. A relic of my ill-spent life. I had Volus Bankers store it and arranged for delivery when I died. He acquired it early. I don't really know how. 
I did wet work on the Citadel around the time his mother died. That may be why he went there. Thane, I don't have your contacts, and I don't have your tracking skills. Why do you need my help for this? I don't need your help. I want it. The last time I saw my son, they grabbed her body in sea bones. Weighted it with stones. He tries to pull from me. Calls for her. The hammer lift her off the platform. They save my belts. The fire has gone to be kindled anew. He begs them not to take her away. They let her body slide into the water. He hits me. Don't let them. Stop them. Why weren't you? It rains. It always rains on Kaje. Warm water pours down his face. I didn't mean to make you relive that. Perfect memory. It is sometimes a burden. Yeah. I like that Shepard kind of looks away a little bit, you know? It's like, I didn't mean to do that, you know? Uh, this is this is a really intense one, for sure. I feel like uh, Samara and Thanes are, I don't know, they're all, they're all really well made. And they all, in a way, have something to do with family, I guess, now that I'm thinking about it. Family ties, what we call family, what we wish was family. What raised us, what made us, you know? I'm yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, freaking all of them do. Jeez. That's interesting. Kind of uh, kind of sad, I guess, that Shepard can't do that. Shepard spends her whole time helping her crewmates connect and and put their past to rest. But she doesn't get to a chance to do that for herself. She has to live in the moment and for the future. I'll get us to the Citadel as soon as possible. Thank you, Shepard. I'll be meditating until you need me. Alright, I'm gonna double check, see... Shepard, is there time to visit the Citadel yet? Not yes. yet. Yes. <laughs> I shall return to my meditations. Okay, ducky, bye. I'm gonna go talk to Samara. Get her mission so we can have one more flag just floating around in the dang nav map. So the Collectors did take New Canton. Yes. But my oh, wife and good. Are in the nick of time. They're resting in San Francisco as we speak. That's great news. It is. But I knew a lot of good people in New Canton. Our mission has to succeed. Canton. Thank God Shepard's in command. That is like one of three times you ever hear, um interesting that God wasn't capitalized either. Is it capitalized in the phrase thank God? I actually don't think it is is it? It should, right? Unless it's like something to do with like the fact that it's a phrase. I don't know. Um, yeah, you don't usually... People don't usually reference um, God in this game. They reference their own mythologies a lot. Like sometimes you get like alien ones, like the goddess or whatever. But uh, I just, it's interesting. I am glad you came. I must ask for your help. That is not easy for me. I, uh, I need to bring Samara right. out. Just tell me what you need. When we met on Ilium, I told you about a very dangerous person I was pursuing. Using the information you obtained, I have located her. She's been going by the name Morinth. I would like to apprehend her before she disappears again. How important is this? Killing her has been my focus for 400 years. It is the most important thing in my life. And the reason I became a Justicar. Where is she? Omega. A nightclub called Omega. Afterlife, which seems a perfect place for her to hunt. Didn't you say you'd pick up her trail after our mission? I know where she is, right now. In a month, she may be gone. This is the best opportunity I've ever had. Tell me about her. She is an Ardot Yakshi. It is a term from a dead Asari dialect. It means demon of the night winds, but that is mythology. She is simply a very dangerous I wonder why they got that name, demon of the mercy. night winds. So is an Ardot Yakshi a special kind of murderer? Morin suffers a rare genetic disorder. When mm. she meets with you, there is no gentle melding of nervous systems. She overpowers yours, burns it out, hemorrhages your brain. You end up a mindless shell, and soon after, you are dead. 
So you hunt down these Asari just because they're born with a genetic condition? It manifests with maturity. When one is diagnosed, she is offered the chance to live in seclusion and comfort. If she refuses, it shows her addiction to the ecstasy she gets from killing her mates. There is no redemption for such a person. I'm gonna say this, but it's I I I do agree in a way with with it's so interesting because this is just like it seems like it's like a tiny tiny fragment of the Mage Templar argument in the Dragon Age series. I just realized that. But at the same time I don't it actually it, it is they actually have to choose between prison and death. It is an addictive condition. Yes. Remember how adaptive we are. If Morant does not want to be cured, she won't be. And that's the problem, is that once they taste it, if they don't control themselves, they will keep going. It's, it's, I mean, it's genetic, it's, like, hormonal in the brain, you know, like the adrenaline rush, you know, it's like, it, 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 it becomes addicting, but I, and I remember... I don't know, maybe we'll check the codex. There might be something later on that explains it a little bit more. And this right here, this juxtaposition between, like, the Hisari, between specifically the Justicar Code and the Ardot Yakshi, um, like, lifestyle, um, is something that I wrote a paper on once um, for, for university. And uh, it was, I mean, it's, there were so many things. It was kind of a poorly written paper, but it was like there were so many ideas I had that I was just like throwing them down on the paper, you know, and... Can't she abstain? Each encounter gives her strength. The effect is narcotic. The more she does it, the more she needs to do it. She will never stop. She can't. And I think... I think you don't necessarily have to figure it out by, like, by mating with somebody and having it happen... That can happen, and that's, like, severely traumatic, but there is something else about the condition that makes it so that, I guess, I, I, I we'll, we'll maybe read it in a codex entry, but there are some Asari scientists who say that because the Ardat Yakshi are unable to meld, to mind meld, it actually leaves them with a condition that's similar in humans. Um, I can't remember the names. It's, um, it's like, disassociation. They cannot sympathize with another person. They become extremely self-centered and selfish because their inability to mind meld means that they are unable to sympathize with other creatures. Unable to look beyond themselves. Why isn't this ever mentioned in Asari literature or art? When we were primitive there because was much they fascination are powerful. with Ardot Some cultures worship them as gods of destruction. Now the Asari have a place in the galaxy, and they don't wish this defect to be widely known. As far as I know, only three exist today. Lie. Two chose a life of seclusion. The third ran. Morinth. She ran, and I am sworn to kill her. In mass spec- Okay, it's not necessarily a lie, but, um, I don't know if she's just, um, trying to hide it from me because, you know, because she is an Asari, but in Mass Effect 3 you find out there's an entire compound of Ardot Yakshi. So it's like, there's not, it's not, and it's also not as uncommon as they kind of make it seem to be in 2. I don't know that I blame her for running. When she fled, she proved her addiction. She was not taking a great moral stand. She simply wants to keep killing. She is a tragic figure, but not a sympathetic one. A tragic figure indeed. But I do think in a way it was to make a stand. This is definitely worthy of your full attention. She confuses her victims, twists their feelings. They will do anything for her favor. We need to stop her. Thank you, Commander. There are no you words can see it. She like what this means to me. Her shoulders just go, whew, There's one you thing know? more. This creature, uh, this monster, she is my daughter. Shepard just, like, stops and comes back. You said this is genetic. How many children do you have? Three. Three. And three Ardat Yakshi are in existence today. It is as it sounds. Marinth was always the wild one. She was happy and free, but selfish. This... This has to... I mean, it's, like, slowly... 
not slowly killing her. She's she's made her stand. She knows what she's doing. But this would have have to have been one of the the hardest decision in her life. Also, perhaps the easiest because she feels it's her responsibility. But and as a mother, she's trying to protect her child by killing her because she doesn't want her daughter to have any more blood on her hands. I think that might have been what probably started it. At this point, I think she does see the injustice. She's a Justicar. She sees the injustice wrought by her daughter and seeks to destroy it and sort of separate the fact that she is her daughter from her, like, from her mentality. But at the same time, I don't think she does. I think she's fully aware of every action she takes and accepts it. You know what I mean? I think I did... I did that one before. I cannot imagine what this is like for you. I do not she, want pity, yeah. Shepard. Yeah. I do not accept it. Mm -hmm. My daughter's condition is my fault, and my redemption lies in killing her. Do not pity me. Simply understand my situation. Yeah. So I normal. I would rather, if, if I ever, you know, if I ever play this again, I'm going to take the middle route, but that is what I did before, because I was. I was like, I'm so sorry, but this woman is not one who accepts pity by any means. Just by looking at her, you can see that. And she's not a physical person, you know? How did all this happen? I spent my youth on the move, adventuring. I killed people, mated with them, or just danced the night away. I learned so much, experienced so much, and then my matron days came. I could finally sit back, bask, and enjoy my family. But in one moment, it was all taken away. It sounds terrible. I sat in a med lab while a nearsighted doctor droned at me, and I learned that nothing was as I thought it would be. I gave up all that I possessed. I own nothing, claim nothing. All my knowledge will die with me. Now my purpose is to destroy my own children. Those moments change you. And I've hundreds of years left to live with that. I say too much. Forgive me. Help me find my long-lost daughter. And kill her. This, the first time I played this, and it dealt with this situation, it just, it blew me away. Even more than things, more than anybody else's, Samara's mission is the one that just blew me away the most. Like, the, the gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching nature. Like, you have to do this task, but it is... I mean, as a human, as Shepard, she's probably kind of going through a lot of emotions hearing this, you know, in a way, you know, but Samara has already had time to deal with that and is now the woman she is, and anything, any any of the, any remnants of those emotions are, are have long been accepted and moved past, in a way, in a way, you know what I mean? We'll go find Morinth. Yeah. I hope okay. we can go to Omega soon. Just making think sure. About that. Meanwhile, I have to go. <laughs> Awkward. Uh, let's check the codex. Ha <laughs> Bringing Arda Yakshi. Uh, Arda Yakshi are sorry suffering from a genetic disorder preventing conventional melding of nervous systems during mating. Instead, Arda Yakshi electrochemically ravage their partner's nervous systems. In extreme cases, leaving victims as vegetated invalids or cor invalids or corpses. A sorry psychologist regard this incapacity for mental fusion as preventing the development of empathy. Empathy, not sympathy, leading to psychopathy. Yeah, that, that that's the case for humans. Um, there is no known cure, which surprises me. You would think they try to they're already sorry. You think they try to figure this out? The disorder generally begins in infancy, infancy, reaching full pathology during maiden adolescent sexual development. While seductive and sexually driven as other Asari, Ardat Yakshi are congenitally sterile. Ancient Asari mythology held Ardat Yakshi as gods of destruction, depicting them as villains of countless legends and the anti-heroes of numerous Asari epics. Contrary to popular belief, Ardat Yakshi are neither extremely rare, around 1% of Asari dwell on the AY spectrum, nor are they all murderers. Most cultivate and discard countless exploitative or abusive relationships during their legally marginal lives. Despite rumors of Ardat Yakshi, Yakshi syndicates, by nature Ardat Yakshi are incapable of long-term cooperation. Which is interesting to me because... In Mass Effect 3, you do end up figuring out that there's a compound where they keep the Asari, the Arda Yakshi. Um, and it's, it's, it's like a monastery. It's not a bad place. It's not like a, like a, like a circle tower. 
um, in a way. <clears throat> but it is, um, it's not so much the Justicars keep it, the Justicars don't, like, stay there and keep an eye on them. Other, like, regular Asari are there to, like, monitor the Ardayakshi, but they are on strict schedules. Um, they, like, aren't allowed to, like, like, um, like, they, they try to do things that they're not supposed to. Um, and they can't, like, congregate past a certain time or whatever, you know. But it, and it may, because a lot of the Ardai actually there are just, are actually trying to have a decent life. You know what I mean? Like, they, this is an area where they can be happy and not marginalized, but not, like, excessively marginalized by society. They're, they're allowed to, to make something of themselves and not be basking in temptation all the time. Because not all of them want that. Like, yes, I think a lot of them maybe, you know, they are on the the psycho psychopathy, like, scale, you know what I mean? But at the same time, this is, they they regard this incapacity, you know, as far as psychologists in general. But I think some of the, like, some of them probably, some of the other actually probably don't, you know? Maybe they are tempted every now and then, but they try very hard to not. And it's kind of like the the mages maybe with the, with the circle. It's like they, they like the circle because it's where they are with their people, um, the, who can understand them. They get they, they are learning how to control their magic. Um, they There's others there to keep them company, you know, and they can do something useful with their lives a little bit. I think it would be better if they could get out a little bit more and be helpful, but um, it's not... The Justicars are feared, but they, they are the ones who bring Ardot Yakshi in sometimes, or sometimes Ardot Yakshi go on their own to this place is, is what I think happens, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, this is my, one of my favorite, this is probably my favorite juxtaposition in the game, is this, like, secret side of the Asari. So, as a disproportionately wealthy species, Asari employ their economic reach and media ownership to hide the AY pathology from the galactic community, placing most Ardot Yakshi in monitored work programs or seclusion. Only the most aggressive cases are sentenced to sanitaria and prisons or to the execution lists of just cars. Um, so, yeah, I think, and in Mass Effect 3, I just, I think Mass Effect 3 really suffered from the change in a lead writer. Uh, Drew Carption did Mass Effect 1 and 2, and then 3, it was just this one, I can't remember who it was, but then I guess, from what I've heard, he ended up, um, not even consulting the, the core group, or the, the, the group of writers who have been working on this game, right, because I'm not just one, it's the lead writer, right, he keeps track of everything, but there's a ton of other people doing the writing, and apparently this, this, the, uh, the new writer did not consult, really, the group of writers, the, the group of writers who have been working on these games at all, and so I think, I don't know if, like, I assume that Mass Effect 2, everything is basically canon. Some of the stuff in Mass Effect 3, I think, was written by not fully understood, perhaps, or, like, the concepts weren't exactly gotten across, you know? So, I don't know, but, because, because you feel, yeah, yeah. Just some some discrepancies there, and it just it makes my soul hurt because Mass Effect Three could have been could have been so much. It was a good game. It was a good game. It's probably it is probably my favorite of the three, in a lot of ways. Depends on which one I played last, but it it is it's probably my favorite. Um, it is the conclusion brings all your decisions together, but at the same time, it just there were parts of it that you're like what. Because if you've played these games, and, like, I read every single codec en entry that I got, like, paid attention to everything, and then there's just little things where you're like, wait a second, what? You know? So... And that becomes a fairly big thing, actually, the fact that there's an, uh, an Ardot Yakshi compound. So... Yeah. Yeah. But... Um, let's go feed my fish really quick. Ah, no, don't do that. Oh, they're still alive. Why is there music? No! No, I know. 
Just because I changed it in the Shadow Broker layer. Does not mean I want it in here. Jeez. Oh my gosh, look at that. Freaking. Ah, yep, yeah, we still have Caden's picture up. But did I run out of space or is that just. I like made room for it on my desk. <laughs> I do need to pay attention to. I want to get the. Uh, oh, did I not use all the ammo? Like, um. Oh, maybe I just looked at them, but I didn't actually poke them, you know what I mean? Come on! Okay, that may be that. That I need to work on, and I need to try doing that. Shoot and kill 20 enemies when they're knocked back by a punch. So what I need to do is run up, tactical charge somebody, and then melee them and shoot them to death. <laughs> okay, 